Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about data validation. There's lots of different ways to validate data in Microsoft Access. Of course, garbage in, garbage out. So you want to prevent garbage from getting into your tables in the first place. Now, the very first thing I like to bring up when it comes to data validation, even for the advanced students, is to be careful using the required property. Now, I know it sounds like a good idea to force the user to have to enter a value, but if they don't have that information, they're likely to just make something up. And no data is better than bad data. I teach this in Access Beginner 1, right? Don't force your users to have to put stuff in. If you require users to type in a phone number and they don't have the customer's phone number and the customer's already left, well, they're just going to type in 8675309, right? And now you have no idea how to generate a list of customers whose actual phone numbers you don't have. So I'd rather deal with nulls than bad data, right? Now, next is input masks. Input masks are great for forcing users to enter data in a particular format. Social security numbers, phone numbers, dates, you name it, right? Got a whole separate video on input masks. You can go watch this one. Now, next up, you got validation rules. These are built into tables. You can also do them in your forms. There's two kinds of validation rules. There's field level validation rules that only apply to one field. And these are good for making sure someone doesn't enter like a negative number for the number of children someone has, for example, that'd be kind of weird. And in this video, I go through a whole bunch of different examples, right? And then you've got table level validation rules, which lets you compare values across multiple fields in the same record. This is where you can do things like make sure the end date comes after the start date, that kind of stuff. Now, once you get past these basic level validation techniques, then we get into some VBA stuff. And the best way I think to handle validating data is in the before update event. Now, this is the event that runs before the data is saved and it allows you to cancel it if the user enters something that they're not supposed to enter, right? There's two different kinds of before update events. There's a field level before update event that happens before you save that value from that field. And then there's the form level before update event, which you can use to verify the data across all of the fields in that record. Kind of like validation rules, right? You got field level validation rules and table level validation rules. Well, that's how before update works. There's two different ones there. And you can even mix before update and after update together and do some really cool stuff. I got a whole separate video on that. Go watch this one. So let me show you an example of something that you can only do with the before updates to do data validation. You can't do it with any of the other techniques. Let's say you want to make it so that your customers can't have two orders placed on the same date. Yeah, I know it's a silly example, but you know, let's say you've got, um, you got a membership plan and you can only take out one movie a day or whatever, or a boat rental thing where you can only do one a week, that kind of stuff. Right? You have to compare this record with other records in the same table or even different tables. Right? So if the user tries to enter in two orders with the same date, it'll yell at them and say, you can't do that. Okay? It's just one example that I picked, but there's lots of different businesses that have lots of different weird rules. And I'm sure if you've got a weird rule like that, you'll see how this is beneficial. Now, before we get started, this is developer level material. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And we're also going to use an if then statement. And we're also going to use the DLOOKUP function. And we're also going to use NZ to convert null values to zero. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so if you've never watched any of my videos before, this is the Tech Help free template. It's a free database you can grab off my website if you want to, and it's got basic stuff in it that I use for my videos. It's got a customer list, it's got a customer form, customers can have orders, and so on. So let's say that we don't want that customer to have two orders on the same date. Okay, he's got one from, these are old, 2023, huh? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a field level before update event for the order date. And again, if it involved multiple things, like let's say you couldn't have two from the same date with the same description, okay, then you could use a form level before update event and check both of those fields, but it's the same basic thing, okay? So I'm gonna go into design view, 
I'm going to go into order dates property, event, before update, hit the builder button. That'll bring up a code builder. Whoop, got really big there. Let me resize it. There we go. Okay. So we're going to look up in the ordered table and try to see if this customer has an order on the same date. Okay, so we're going to need to store that value somewhere. And let's put a little comment in here first. See if this customer has another order on the same date. And we're going to assume that the orders in our table only have dates and not dates with times, because then it gets more complicated. If your order dates have times on them, then you got to use inequalities. You got to say greater than or equal to this date and less than the date next to it. So we're just going to assume we're dealing with just straight dates here. Okay. I got whole separate videos on dealing with dates with times. All right. So I'm going to dim and order ID as a long. And I'm going to say order ID equals. We're going to D look up. <laughs> I got a little funny O there. D look up. What are we D look upping? Order. Order ID from the order table. All right, now we got a bunch of criteria. First, it's got to be this customer. Now, on this particular form, customer ID is actually stored in a field called customer combo. All right, you could use a customer ID if you want to. I like to use the name of the field just to make sure. So we're going to say in here where the customer ID equals customer combo. Okay, so, so we got this customer. And we're going to continue it on the next line. And, right? All right, what other criteria do we have in here? Well, we got to match the order date, right? So the order date has to be equal to, and then dates have to go inside of pound signs, right? Order date is the field on the form, and then close our pound signs up. So now we've matched up the customer is this customer, and the order date is the order date on this order. But we're not done yet because we also want to make sure it's a different order, right? So we have to say, and the order ID is not the order ID on this order. Because you could have two orders in the system and then you just go in and change the second one, right? And it would have a different order ID. Okay, now all of that, if that value exists, it will return the ID. If it doesn't exist, this will return a null, which we don't want because we can't stuff a null into a long. So that's where the NZ function comes in. NZ. If that is null, give me back a zero. Okay. All right. Now we can check for that zero. If order ID is not zero, then that means we have another order that matches those criteria. So message box. Right, customer has another order on this date. So that's bad. So we're gonna cancel equals true. Yes, I know cancel is an integer. Technically, I always use cancel as true because it just, it reads better and it works because it's still, it checks for zero or not zero, right? False is zero. True is technically negative one, but that's fine. Okay, anyways. And then when we're done, we're gonna exit sub. And if, and we're done. Why do I put the exit sub there, even though we're going to exit the sub down here anyways? Well, that's in case later on I decide to put more stuff down here, right? I put another condition. And at this point, I've got enough to exit the sub, so I'm going to. I always try to think about what is what is me going to do in two or three days or two or three years, which is why I started putting comments on everything too, right? <laughs> so me three years from now can just look at that and go, oh, okay, I get it now. I don't have to reread everything and try to make sense of it. Okay, ready? Save it. Control S. Debug. Compile once in a while. All of our code is good. Let's exit out of here. Close it. Close it. Close it. Close it. All right. Open it. Open it. All right. I'm just going to change this one to today's date. Control colon. All right. That puts in today's date, 6-4. I'm going to go to the next one. And let's change this guy's date. Same thing. Ready? I'm going to hit tab. And... Customer has another order on this date. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word. Right? And now I hit OK. And I have no choice but to either hit Escape and cancel that edit. Or I can go in here and change it to something else. 
Uh, if I go to another new record and try to put today's date in there, it's going to say, ah, ah, ah. You didn't say <laughs> Great movie. Okay. All right. So that's that. And that is an example of something you can't do with all of the other basic validation rules. Required input mask, right? Regular validation rules, table level validation rules. So you need VBA to check against other records like that. Do you like this kind of stuff? Do you like learning with me? Well, check out my developer lessons. I got tons of them on my website. I teach you everything you need to know about VBA. And this is really everything you need to know about VBA to be a good developer. I'm up to, what, developer 52, I think, is my latest one. So there's lots and lots of stuff on my website. If you want to keep learning, check it out. Link is down below. But that's going to do it, folks. That's it for advanced data validation. Hey, if you've got other types of data validation you want to see examples for, send them in. Post a comment down below. Drop me an email. Post it in the forums. Let me know what you want to see. I'm always looking for great ideas for new videos. And, of course, I always say if you find something, you know, if you're looking for something access-related and you do a search and I don't come up, I want to know about it. I'll make you a video. Okay? But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.